you for being online watching this communication. First of all, <clears throat> allow me to remind you that I was supposed to communicate to you on Friday. However, like uh, I updated you on Friday, our network was deliberately slowed down and then finally switched off. Not only the internet network, but also power was switched off. Therefore, I was not able to communicate to you from Magere. And indeed, uh, when updated you, I've been seeing many of your comments advising me not to speak to you from my Magere home because the same thing would happen. And therefore, I heeded to your advice. And today, I'm not streaming live from Magere. We decided to move this communication to today's Sunday for various reasons. But most importantly, because we knew that Museveni is going to speak today. And because he's going to speak today, chances are fewer that the internet will be switched off because he also wants to communicate to the people of Uganda. Imagine where we are, ladies and gentlemen, where we can only time our communication, where we can only speak when Museveni wants people to listen. And therefore, I'm glad to be talking to you today regardless. Today, I want to talk to you uh, about three things. One, I want to appreciate all of you for the work and all the various things that you've been doing in support of the struggle. I also want to update you uh, on the state of affairs in our country and the state of our struggle. And finally, I want to suggest a way forward. I am glad that I'm able to come to you straight without any glitches as on Friday, many of you know that along the campaign trail, network jammers were always stationed um, where we were to make sure we don't stream live to you. And in the same way, um, network jammers were driven. There's a truck that jams the network that was driven and parked at my Magere home. I'm even informed a few minutes ago that the network around Magere was once again slowed down. I'm glad that we thought before time, and now we are able to talk to you. I want to thank you, fellow Ugandans, very, very much for the support. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the support that you've given to us before during and after the elections. Ladies and gentlemen, it is you fellow Ugandans here in Uganda and in the diaspora that footed the bills of our posters, that bought the fuel, that fed us, that treated us, that did everything. Even if General Museveni likes to always claim that we are funded by foreigners, but we are funded and supported by you, the common Ugandans here in Uganda and abroad, I cannot take you for granted. I want you to know that you are the wind beneath our wings. Thank you very much for turning up to vote. Thank you very much for giving me your trust, for voting me, electing me as your president, because I know you voted for me to be your president. And I know that we won. We won according to the declaration forms that we were able to collect up to 25,000 declaration forms. And those that we could not access uh, including the ones that were, you know, confiscated from us and from our agents by soldiers and the police. Where we didn't get declaration forms, we relied on those that came from the Electoral Commission, even when we don't trust them. So according to our tally, our finding is that we won with 54.19%. In the face of all the rigging, we are aware, as you watched the military, police officers, pre-ticking all available ballot papers in favor of General Museveni. I already updated you, ladies and gentlemen, that military trucks were moving from one polling station to another, especially in the districts of Western Uganda and Northern Uganda, ticking all available ballot papers in favor of General Museveni. Many places were not able to vote uh, in Northern and Western Uganda. At many polling stations, the voters reached, but were told that the election was not taking place. 
Some were told that they could only vote for their members of parliament and go back home. They could not vote for the president. So in the face of all those irregularities, I am proud that you Ugandans asserted your voices very solidly. And therefore, I am confident to inform you, ladies and gentlemen, that we won. We won this election. Of course, as you know, um, General Seven using the military, police, and all other institutions of state rigged this election, albeit brainlessly, but they rigged it. Um, we are all aware that the Electoral Commission announced the results before even actually counting. That explains why they every now and then put up contradicting um, declaration forms, trying to justify their rigging. So I thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for turning up and voting, and most importantly, voting for change. I want to thank you for supporting us during the election, but most importantly, supporting us after that election. You are all aware that General Seven started arresting our people, torturing them so bad. Many have shown up dead, while others are still in hospital, nursing wounds of torture. You, ladies and gentlemen, especially you friends in the diaspora, the US chapter, the European chapter, the friends of Uganda across the world, you have supported us. You have treated the victims of torture. You have treated those that are, you know, are with grave, grave injuries. And indeed, those that have died, you've supported us. For example, just the day before yesterday, we were uh, laying our comrade Fabian in Arua. You supported the funeral. You supported the transportation of the body. We salute you, ladies and gentlemen. We continue to be motivated by your kindness. And we can only say we won't give up simply because we know that you are there. We also thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for supporting those comrades that are in incarceration. You've constantly supported those in Chitalia, those in different prisons across the country with meals, with bail money, with legal uh, you know, assistance, and all the assistance that you've uh, extended to their families, the welfare of their families. Hundreds of our comrades are in prison, but their families don't lack not because of we, the leaders, but because of you, Ugandans, that dig deep in your pockets to ensure that these comrades are constantly reminded that they are not alone. Thank you very much. You know, I cannot thank you enough, ladies and gentlemen, but I'll only say that God should bless you abundantly, and we can only pledge not to give up. I want to update you about the state of affairs in our country. Ladies and gentlemen, as you are aware, after the election, knowing the kind of crime that he had committed, knowing the kind of fraud that they've just, they, they just uh, gotten involved in, General Museveni and Sonia Azifola Busungu, he started rounding up all our people. Abductions increased. Many people have been abducted. Some have shown up dead, like in Mukono and in northern Uganda while others have shown up with grave, 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 grave injuries. A young man called Segawa Ronald, who many of you saw in a video, who was paid to paint himself yellow and move on skates to pretend he supported Museveni. As you know, Museveni has always been renting support. This year... the people of Uganda that he is there to make money, but his heart was for change. Segawa was abducted, beaten so bad, three of his fingers were cut off, his teeth were removed, he was tortured and dumped for dead. Uh, Good Samaritans picked him up, took him to hospital. Like many others, he is still uh, recovering, but he's strong. Not only that, I can only give you a few examples, ladies and gentlemen, but the abductions have increased. More than 600 people have gone missing. Just today, a young man from Nachifuma, uh, famously known as Jimani, was abducted. Nobody knows where he is. And a few of those that have showed up, you've seen, they've 
uh, they've come out bearing marks of torture. Uh, many have been murdered, like I've said. The females that have uh, been lucky to resurface have reported being raped in detention by government security. Others have been tortured so bad that they even fear to speak. We have a, a newly elected mayor in Buwama. He has been missing for a month. But when he and his comrades showed up, they could not dare speak because their close associates tell us that they were gravely intimidated and promised to be murdered if they dared to speak out. However, it's at this note that I want to encourage all of you friends, speak out. Speaking out is the only security that you have. I always told you on the campaign trail, and I tell you now that the camera is our biggest weapon. Dictators fear being exposed. So don't be intimidated. They released you because they could not hold you any longer, because there's so much pressure. So while we exert the pressure, once you happen to get your freedom, speak out. Your speaking out is going to be life-saving for the many people that are in incarceration. Let these murderers know that they cannot go scot-free. Let these murderers know that everybody that comes out will expose them. That is the only way we can stop this crime. We have all seen Genoma 7 telling lies. He came out and confessed that SFC, his personal army, his personal guards, are the ones that are holding our people, even though he cut down the number to 53. But he came out and said SFC is the one holding our people. Interestingly, when the spokesperson of SFC came out to speak to the nation, he denied holding those citizens of Uganda. But again, in the same communication, the spokesperson of SFC said they don't have to follow any law when they are abducting and kidnapping these, our fellow Ugandans. So you can imagine the impunity. President Avayo Nagamba, Aba SFC, Beba Kwatawa Nabantu, Erabe Baba Tulugunya. Aba SFC, Neba Vayo, Nebe Ghana. And then, Neba Mala, Neba Gamba, Teba Ina Goberina Mate Kagona, Gaba Kwatawa So you can imagine the impunity that we are dealing with in Uganda today. Many attacks have continuously gone on. Just yesterday, our comrade uh, Mobiru James was brutally arrested, and up to now, nobody knows where he is. That's where we are. And sadly, this is not only happening to those in the opposition, but even those that have supported the NRM for the longest time. I was um, watching TV, and I recall with misery, a lady that has been a diehard of NRM and M7 supporter, crying, looking for her son. She cannot find her son because her son was abducted and he is missing simply because the son is supporting change, simply the, because the son is supporting Chagulani. I have told you time and again, friends, that nobody is free. Where there's no rule of law, where there's impunity, nobody is safe, not even you that support General Museveni. For example, Mr. Tamari Mirundi is a renowned regime supporter, is a renowned Museveni supporter. Every time he shows up on TV or online, he is wearing yellow. He clearly supports Museveni regardless of the impunity that's ongoing. On Friday, the day I was supposed to communicate to you, I learned that his son, Tamale Mirundi Jr., was attacked and beaten very badly, losing teeth and having to go through an operation. I spoke to his mother and I spoke to his father just to communicate to them and express my concern um, with them. But this speaks to many of us. The only cases that we can update you about, the only cases that we can talk about are the popular cases, are the outstanding cases. But these are only an example of the grave, grave human rights abuses that are ongoing in Uganda today. Imagine if the military attacks and tortures and brutalizes children of renowned NRM supporters, what do you think happens to the rest of the country? What do you think happens to the little known young men and women in the ghetto. That is where we are. That is who Museveni 
really is. Uh, we sympathize with you, friends. Tuba sasira, tuimiri denamwe, na hira tuwa gala mumanye mikwano jafe. Kipye tuwa ogera ko, big tuka kubulimutu. Injustice to one is injustice to all. What affects one directly affects all indirectly. Eche chinyi giri za abantu abamu directly. Chinyi giri za nabalala indirectly. Nisonga luachi, na mweba nafe. Abagama tumuwa gira mwai museveni. Tetumuwa la nangoo mtu. Na hitu wala na evi kolobero museveni vyako la. Museveni yavu miriranga idi amin. Now he's doing ten times worse than idi amin. And that should speak to you. It should speak to all of us. We are fighting against injustice, against impunity, against lawlessness, against state-inspired violence, against human rights abuses. And nobody is safe until we are all safe. So it is sad, very sad to know. I mean, the other day I was in Chitalia visiting some of our comrades. But among them is a 21-year-old young man. His name is Mujuche also known as Lukman. Lukman Kampala is our cameraman. He turned 21 years yesterday. But Lukman was arrested and now detained in Chitalia for simply associating with National Unity Platform, for simply being a member of People Power, for simply supporting Chagulanyi and being a friend to Chagulanyi. Lukman's father was among the soldiers that ushered in the NRM regime. Lukman fought to, you know, to bring in, Lukman's father, sorry, for to bring in uh, Museveni into power. Tatawa Lukman, that the son will live in a better Uganda. These, our parents, struggled to make sure that children um, live in a better Uganda. But here we are watching Rafael Mwejuche, a son to an NRA Bushiro, who is now in Chitalia, simply because he is exercising his democratic right. That is very sad. Many young men and women have been arrested, rounded up. We have had numerous stories. When I was in Chitalia, I was informed that up to 90% of the inmates in Chitalia government prison are brought in for being associated with NUP. Some of them were arrested um, on taxi, uh, you know, parks. A taxi comes and the conductor is calling Kampala, Kampala, Genderao, and they all get in. They drive up to CMI. Why? Because Museveni fears young people. Museveni knows that young people have been betrayed. He has, you know, duped them, and he knows that they are not supporting him. And he fears them because he knows they will assert their right in one way or another. So he's rounding the up Nalumanya. Nesalumanya. Many of them are charged for possession of military stores. Many of them have never seen a beret like the one, or never touched a beret like the one I'm wearing. But when they reach there, they are put um, in a room, made to wear a beret, a picture is taken, and they are detained in Chitalia. That is how sad it is, ladies and gentlemen. Many of our children, our little young brothers and sisters, who are supposed to be returning to school, are actually missing their senior four and senior six exams. Why? Because they are in prison. Why are they in prison? Simply because they want change or simply because they are young people. And the old man that is ruling us on gunpoint is scared of young people. Many challenges, friends. We are aware that the economy is in shambles. We are aware of the rampant unemployment so many businesses have crumbled. Many people have lost their jobs. Why? Because General Museveni wants to keep us in that position. Businesses have suffered, ladies and gentlemen. And yet, many parents like me here have to take back their children to school. But the same people that want to take back their children to school actually don't even have what to feed the children because of the conditions that have been created by General Museveni. COVID-19 itself is being used as a political tool. And as if that's not enough, General Museveni has imposed a political curfew. So many of our people survive on border border business, but by seven, border borders are not allowed to work. As a person that grew up in the ghetto, as a person that 
always worked at night. There's something called the night economy. The people that rule over us don't know that actually there are millions of people that survive on the night economy. Those who cook tea and food, those who work in entertainment places, those who work in taxi parks at night, those who work through the night, they cannot work anymore. These are people that are expected to survive. These are people that are supposed to pay school fees for children. But unfortunately, their lives were put to a halt. There's no justification. There's no, Museveni cannot explain the relationship between curfew and COVID-19. But they continue to impose a curfew on our people, even when it's not justified. Chinono chagulabe nyo mikwano jangi. Chagulabe nyo okulaba anti abatu kulembira tebafa yo. Aba na Uganda banji nyo gemirimu jabe jachiro. Ngaba buba surviving ira ku night economy. Ngo muntu wako zeke mundongo. Ngo muntu wako zeke mbura mwe chiro. Mutakse ze chiro. Mikole je chiro. Tumanyinti banji abafumba chai kuzipaka. Abafuga zibode chiro. Abafuga takse chiro. Ngo majivuga misano mulala. Jivuga chiro. Bodo majivuga misano mulala. Jivuga chiro. Nebida lefana na buwe bitio. Ogula mubu abwe. Wakoma. Wachi. Kuba mseve ni ya teka o kafiu. Taso wala kunyo nyola. Nti kafiu. Ega sabu eti. Kumukulwanyisa obulwadde. During the day, the towns are packed. But at night, simply because he wants to subjugate the people and keep them under stiff control, he has imposed that curfew. And every, every now and then when he's scared of what would happen, he tightens the curfew. We criticize that in the hardest terms possible. But again, criticizing it is not going to be enough, ladies and gentlemen. In our suggested way forward, maybe we'll suggest a few things, but... Like I constantly say, it's also upon you, the people of Uganda. It's not only upon the leaders. You are leaders too, so you can also devise solutions. Besides the night economy that has died, the health care sector, we borrowed loads of money to revamp our health care. We had expectations that maybe the COVID-19 pandemic might give us reason to refurbish our hospitals, to restock our hospitals, to have medicines in our hospitals. Alas, General Museveni used all the borrowed money to ensure that he uses it in campaigns, to ensure that he uses that money to, you know, uh, perpetuate himself in power. And for that reason, our health sector continues to sink. Our hospitals and health centers continue to be sick themselves. People suffering from COVID-19 are dying here in Uganda because of reasons like lack of oxygen. You can imagine in a pandemic, in a health crisis, hospitals are doing worse than they were doing before, despite of the trillions uh, borrowed. Insecurity. We are facing insecurity brought by security. What do I mean? It is the security agencies that are supposed to guarantee security. Very unfortunately, they are the ones that are increasing the insecurity. We are aware that police officers, LDUs, soldiers are the ones either robbing people or waylaying them and extorting money from them. Just a simple drive at 8 o'clock, you're going to find people rounded up. If you are able to bring 10,000 or 5,000, you will go home. If you're not, then you're going to go to prison. Very many people are in prisons having been arrested out of purportedly uh, enforcing a curfew. So this is insecurity by security. We've seen looting by men and women in uniform, extortion by men and women in uniform. Very sad. Very many grave um, injustices that are ongoing. However, like we said when we were starting our campaign, that we have gone past the book of lamentations. We are heading to the book of actions. So because I don't intend to take so long communicating, ladies and gentlemen. It is necessary to
to remind us of the challenges that we are facing as a nation. But again, we want to uh, remind you that we are the solutions, and therefore to point so much to the solutions, well knowing that the nation, the leadership that we have is not pro-people, but against the people. Corruption is one thing that we cannot fail to talk about recently. The uh, Auditor General released a report showing that the government have actually failed to account for the billions and billions that were borrowed to fight COVID-19. So it was a billion in a billion. Government is over a kulagangi riches are from Izidwa. Nengas are from Izidwa. And that is how it has been. Every day in the papers, there's a story uh, talking about corruption, talking about billions and billions that have been stolen. Unfortunately, these billions are stolen either by relatives of the president or by cohorts of the president or the inner circle of the president or the untouchables of this country. And therefore, we can only talk about it and leave it there. And that's it until we decide to paint a better way forward. Number three, the way forward. What is the way forward? With all the challenges that we've mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, with all the injustices, with all the unbearable pains that we are facing, what is the way forward? First and foremost, we looked at changing leadership, and that is why we went into the election. Which election was mild with brutality, with lawlessness, with murder, hundreds of our people were killed and looking at the 18th and 19th of November, over 100 shot dead. Nobody held accountable only for General Museven to come out, chest thumping and congratulating his boys for a job well done. And the killing has continued. We won the election, but we were not announced winners. I was put under house arrest. We petitioned the Supreme Court. You all saw how the Chief Justice conducted himself and his remarks. And that's why I told you that we are bringing back the matter to the court of the people. So what is the way forward? Friends, in, 19, in the 1980s, we all remember General Museveni saying, and I quote, what else can one do when a government has closed all ways of peaceful change. What can we do other than resigning to slavery? He said that before he and his friends took up arms, which led to the death of more than half a million people. That was in 1980. There's a book that I've been reading. This book is called Mission to Freedom. Uganda Resistance News. It was written between 1981 and 1985. This book was written by Museveni and his friends. Um, I want to quote from this very book. I will read for you a little bit from page three. It says, and I read, the right of rebellion against tyranny has been recognized from the most ancient of times to the present day by men of all creeds, ideas, and doctrines. It is part and parcel of the notion of political liberty. It transcends any narrow laws enacted by petty dictators and despots. The right to rebellion transcends any laws enacted by petty dictators and despots, just like Museveni. He goes on to say, the right to rebel against tyranny was at the very root of the American war of independence against the British imperialism. It was at the root of the French Revolution against divine right and monarchical despotism, despotism. It was at the root of many successful anti-colonial wars in countries here in Africa and elsewhere, for example, Algeria, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Guinea-Bissau, Angola, and others. Even the, the normally 
impatriable Britons found occasion to invoke this right on a number of occasions. Once at Rudumaid, to force King John to sign the Magna Carta, and on other occasions to depose crowned kings like James II and Charles. This golden right was aptly defined by the American Declaration of Independence signed on July 4th, 1776 in Philadelphia. Museven goes on to say, we, to, he goes on to quote uh, the declaration of uh, the American Declaration of Independence, and that was in 1776. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable, inalienable rights, that among these are the right to life, to liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter, abolish it, and to institute a new government. Laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Museveni goes on to say, indeed rebellion against tyranny is not only a right, it is a duty for all oppressed people to carry out. The glorious men of the French Revolution stated this truth most aptly in their declaration of rights of man. When, when, when a government violates the rights of the people, insurrection is for them and is for them the most sacred of rights and most imperative of duty. That is Museven. He says, I'll read this again. The glorious men, the glorious men of the French Revolution stated this truth most aptly in their declaration of the rights of man. That when government violates the rights of the people, insurrection is for them the most sacred of rights and the most imperative of duties. The people of Uganda have invoked this right and arisen to the call of duty and taken up arms against Obote's regime of blood, oppression, and national shame. Then he asked, he went ahead to give us a justification of the war. These words were spoken by Museveni when he was our age. They go on to give us a story of 1980. This is in a book written by Museveni. These are his words. Museveni goes on to say, on December 10th, 1980, Ugandans went to the polls. By late afternoon on December 11th, it was clear that UPC and Obote were heading for a resounding defeat, in spite of all the rigging that they had done at earlier stages of registration of voters, nomination of candidates, demarcation of electoral boundaries, etc. The UPC was seized with panic. Paul Muanga, at the time Obote's proxy as head of government, took over the powers of the Electoral Commission and by his decree of December 11th, 1980, the decree stopped the returning officers and the Electoral Commission itself from declaring any results unless such results were personally approved by Mwanga. The decree further directed that all returning officers should not, on, should not submit their constituency results to the Electoral Commission but to himself, Paolo Mwanga, Obote's man at the time. A record fine of 70,000 in 1980, that was more than 200 million today. 
that was the fine imposed by Mwanga for anybody who did not comply with the decree. At a secret meeting throughout the 19, throughout the night of December 11th, Obote and Mwanga proceeded to allocate seats to their party cohorts, even those that had not even gotten 10% of the votes. The following day of 12th December 1980, using their control of the national radio, the army, the police, and other state machinery, and backed by the government of Tanzania, Obote and Mwanga announced their coup. One became the president, the other became the vice president and minister for defense. Once again, a minority and unpopular clique was imposed on the people of Uganda, leaving them with no option but to take up arms in defense of the democratic rights. Those awards of Yoweri Museveni in 1980 up to 1985. Do you find any similarity to today? If you only remove the name Obote and put the name Seven, if you only remove the name Paulo Muanga and put a name of Yabakama, you'll find that this whole writing becomes fresh again. Fellow Ugandans, we are back to that same point. 40 years later. 40 years later, after losing more than half a million of our mothers and fathers, we are back to the same place. The same thing, and even worse, is happening today in our generation. So, what is the way forward? I've labored to go into all that detail so that you understand where we are and where we must go as a nation, as a generation. I've said it right from the word go that we are nonviolent. We don't believe in violence. We are tired. We are frustrated. We are hungry and we are angry. But at least we still have a brain. We have conscience. We respect life. We are many, much more than these criminals. We are younger, therefore faster and stronger than them. We are more connected. We could be violent, but we choose not to use violence because violence only begets violence. Darkness cannot remove darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot remove hate. Only love can do that. Therefore, violence cannot stop violence. Only nonviolence can do that. And we know that for us to win more seven we must not out, outdo him in violence. We must not outdo him in evil. We must be different. That's why we don't want to be evil. That's why we don't want to be violent. But what is the solution? I am glad to inform you, friends, that according to the research that we've done and the studies that we've had, we know that nonviolence is much more powerful than violence. Yes, violent revolutions have succeeded a few times in the past including here in uganda but at a very high cost in terms of property and life but we also know that nonviolence has succeeded many many more times than violence therefore ladies and gentlemen we decided to despise violence and take up nonviolence because nonviolence is much easier to participate in so as a way forward, ladies and gentlemen, having tried all the legal ways and seeming to hit a wall, we remembered that we have not exhausted all legal ways. For example, Article 3, in fact, I'll start with Article 29 of our, pop of our Constitution, gives us the right to demonstrate and protest peacefully against any injustice. It is within our constitution. And Article 3 of our constitution makes it not only right, but a duty for the people of Uganda to rise up peacefully and unarmed. As a matter of fact, it gives us the right to use everything possible to restore constitutionalism once it has been overthrown. It's clear that General Museveni, using the military 
and other goons that carry guns but not in uniform has overthrown the constitution. So we, as the people of Uganda, have a duty, not only right, but a duty to rise to the occasion and restore constitutionalism in this, our country. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, it's with that backdrop that we decided to announce peaceful protests. We called for peaceful protests because they are lawful. We called for peaceful protests because they work. We called for peaceful protests because they are our solution now. We know that Museveni is the kind of person that will respond to anything with violence. He only knows violence. He cannot tell us anything anymore. He cannot convince us anymore. Therefore, he will resort to violence at the quickest provocation. He resorts to violence. And indeed, since the day we called for peaceful protests, in the last four days, more than 230 innocent Ugandans have been arrested and remanded. Many of them are in Chitalia. As a matter of fact, even those that were not protesting, but because this is a very scared regime, they were arrested and they are remanded in Chitalia. The abductions increased and they continue. I am here, first and foremost, to give you confidence, brothers and sisters, that this is possible. It is very, very possible. Our struggle continues. General Museveni is cracking down on all people of Uganda, even when they are not violent, because he is scared of the people. But I want to remind you, friends, that just here in the neighborhood in Sudan, Museveni's friend, Omar El Bashir, had apparently won the election with 94.05. He gave himself 94.05 in an election in 2015. And he gave himself the majority in parliament. But in 2018, he was kicked off by unarmed citizens who knew their rights and they asserted their rights. A few of them were killed. Very many of them were imprisoned. But they cannot imprison all of us. Allow me to thank and salute all the friends that have responded to this, our call. We've seen Ugandans protesting. I saw uh, some led by Honorable Nyeko Derek protesting peacefully, kneeling down and showing their dissatisfaction. I saw others in Kawempe. I saw many in Gulu and some in Jinja and in various places that I've not uh, yet seen. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I know it is tough, but we might begin small, but with consistency, we will be there. We should remind ourselves that consistency breaks resistance. So let us insist, well knowing that what we're doing is legal, what we're doing is right. I want to remind you that it is not going to be one day or one way. No. We know that we are going to be it might take longer, it might take a week, a month, or even several months. But if we insist, they cannot arrest all of us. Because for as long as you know that you have not broken any law, we must be proud to suffer for what's right to stand together, to protest together, to go to jail together, and to win together, because we will certainly win. We know that. You should know that. So be motivated. Be encouraged, ladies and gentlemen. Keep going. Like I said, it might not take one day or one form of protest. So take it upon yourselves. Devise means of protesting. I encourage those that have been intimidated so much because... It's true, the police and military has been deployed everywhere to just brutalize anybody that dares to speak out. But friends, these people cannot be on our streets forever. No, I know that Museveni, because he cannot pay these security uh, operatives that he deploys on the streets, 
Probably that's why he condones the, um, the, the, the extortion that they're carrying out on the innocent citizens. Why? Because to him, they're paying themselves regardless of the insecurity and the inconvenience that they're causing to the people. But persist, friends. Keep going. Do not give up. We can do this and we are going to do it. Let us find various ways of protesting and we should go on to protest. Now, it's at this note, friends, that I want to note this very, very important issue. And that is the issue of discipline. Discipline. Discipline, friends. A revolution without discipline is dead at birth. A revolution without discipline is going to be very quickly vulgarized. We must be disciplined so that people join us. We must be disciplined so that we can distinguish ourselves as the ones who are right while our detractors are wrong. We must exercise discipline so that we even encourage people to join us, so that we let people trust us. We must be disciplined. I want to discourage the business of maligning leaders, of calling out leaders of some of our colleagues using social media to blackmail their colleagues. That is not what we are here for. We know that there are challenges everywhere. What one person has not done, you can do. The blackmail and constant calling out and constant, you know, um, false, falsehoods that are training on social media, they do not help our revolution. They only help the dictator. And that is what the dictator wants. So I discourage that. I don't support it. And it must stop. Kachino kancho gere ni muruganda ni kwano jange. Echigambo cha discipline. Ndabi banji nyo kumana fe. Nga ate tebaba na dala ku social media. Nga mama laininga. Nga basa haba ateba nabwe. Bebali mustrago yemu. Techina chichitu ongera kogo kuda ku social media. No yogere daba freedom fighter ba no. Muno chale mendo kola. Gosobo lo chikola. Echo kuda okusoja gana. No ko gere na ngane bifukule, ama fukule. Te chitu ongera ko, wabula chongera ko dictator. As a matter of fact, dictator achikoze sanyo, okuteka ulu atika mufe, okutuwa ula ya ula. Okuteka ulu tesi gangana, to create doubt amongst the forces of change. Te china chichiku ongera ko, gokuda ku social media, no kolo kutateba kulembeze bano, I've been seeing it and I don't like it. E chonjaga la chikome, e mbagira wo. The trouble of Wanga to Rani Sana Chemalida, the trouble of Wanga to Rani Somo to Awamba Bantuafi, Atta Bantuafi, Ate, a man you get to Andy Cosesa, Okurani Ravanafi, Abawambi, Abadim of Tuguniswa, a Savazino, Abadim of Kulaibo, Abachala Abadim of Quatibo, Atta Manyabu, the Tugauza, Tiagam, to Rani Siganing, Budu to Rani Sevanafi. Mani, Tiabakulem Bezevanji, no, Abata Nasova Cola, Chevaina Cola, or Rembera Jetulimu. Na ye ulicha ale meduwa kola. Eitha mutu ukiride. Oyugire na ye personally. Obagu ochikole. Abantu abatulabe yobagu wa mwenye amanyi. Gabala watuze mkuso jagana. Echo chile meseza nyo. Bana yugando kwenu nula kumare banga dene. Chitu kumi dembu sibe. So njagala chikome embagira wo. Because it does not do us any good. It just divides us. It weakens us. It discourages us. It discourages the leaders. It discourages everybody. While I call upon leaders to give leadership to their people. But let us do that with respect. We've always said that we shall see and judge people by their actions. Olivu wabano obu nafu, tumutu kirirenga ye, kubatu liba kulembeze, era abantu, batu esiga. I want to request you comrades to focus. There's going to be a lot of diversion, a lot of diversion. You're going to be told various stories. I've been watching various groups. A group will come and say, ah, do not protest because you're going to cause us problems. Don't be diverted. Nalabi na haba lalaba vudeyo, nebe iti haba people power, na inga baga la kutuja wa kumulama. Temuli rizabo, haba sumbui, haba tabuzi. 
Let us keep our eyes on the prize, ladies and gentlemen. As I conclude, I want to call upon the leaders, all leaders, religious leaders, cultural leaders, political leaders, and all forces of change. Friends, this is not a call of only the National Unity Platform. This is a call of the people of Uganda. You can make that call in your own voice, in your own shade, in your own color, for as long as it is for the people of Uganda. This is a time when we must stand all together, whether you are political leader or your religious leader, let us demand for what is right. Our people are being murdered day and night. It can no longer be about the politicians. It can no longer be about a certain religious sect, about a certain tribe. No, it's about all of us as the people of Uganda. So let us stand together and offer leadership to the people of Uganda. Let us reject what is wrong and embrace what is right, regardless of the language. Let us reject what is oppressive and embrace what is right. Let us reject what is unjust and embrace what is just to all the leaders. It would be the best experience for the people of Uganda if we can all speak in one voice, with one voice. We don't have to stand on the same podium to say this, but the people know when you speak for them and when you speak not for them. So kindly embrace the call. All leaders, make the same call. Let us have our people stand up and liberate themselves. I encourage all of us to use social media, knowing that it is hard for such a message of freedom to be permitted on TV or radio. But let us use social media because it's very powerful and all other means of communication. I want to encourage you not to give up, ladies and gentlemen. We have come from far. We have gained a lot of victories. We are glad that as we stand here, the people of Uganda are all aware and awake. It has never been the way it is. From the educated to the uneducated, the young, the old, the men, the, 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 the women, the, 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 the rich, the poor, all tribes, all religions, we all know what is right. So we should celebrate that as we move on. Let us not give up. We shall certainly win. We shall certainly get our freedom. Do not give up, ladies and gentlemen. Many are in prison. Many are dead. Many are in hospital. But let us remember that these people, including the ones that have paid the ultimate price, have done this to liberate us. For us who still can, let us keep soldiering on, let us keep moving, let us keep doing what is right. After all, the entire world is standing with us. After all, we are on the right side of history, on the right side of the law, on the right side of morality. The law is with us. The people of Uganda are with us and God is with us. So don't give up, Aluta, continua. As for me, I will be back.